firstly welcome to the new normal so good to see you thank you very much i just had to put on my american suit today you know i know i know, yeah, I know. Yeah. is there a reason why you look so um i, I want to say <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there's some old clothes that have been gathering dust in my wardrobe and uh, on my path you know yeah i just uh, i just said let me just go back and have a feel a bit what it feels like to be in a suit and um what inspired that look I mean, we are in a we're in this colonial state but let's keep our minds african yeah. okay okay yeah. Somewhere, wrong. somewhere there there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that so there's two things that we're going to do today um we're going to touch on this topic of what's happening around the world and also we're going to come back home and talk to our very own revolutionary who was detained at JFK airport mm. classified a terrorist mm. my guest is um that the Tokyo Sohwale Tokyo Sohwale is a household name and synonymous to the emancipation of um black leadership from apartheid transitioning into democracy 1994 i think it was the first gauteng premier a mm. uh, black premier under the leadership of nelson mandela and i look forward to obviously um engaging mm. our friends who are joining us on ig right now yeah. thd24 our friends that are joining us um so if you do actually want to call in we can actually even take calls 0118833343 i look forward to having a great dialogue uh, can we is that is that is that okay with you the menu thus far i'm more than happy Fantastic. more than happy more than yeah? happy. but but i'm sad yeah. maybe just on top of the program when you have a system of governance and it put it it puts its knee yes on someone and you have a system that has become a murderer Man. i mean for me that was not even uh, that's not even worth talking about you are looking at a, a criminal a murderer of the highest note when a man says i can't breathe yes. man i don't know how we're going to carry this on tonight but my heart is a bit heavy when you look at that video live it just sends a strong message that you are either a suspect in a foreign land mm. until proven innocent and is america home of the free and land of the brave mm. as its source claims yeah. Yeah. it um, depends it depends who is free and who is brave yeah who is brave and i posted something interesting today i said you know what um racism is about economics and i want to ask and take your point do you think racism or economics play a significant role in determining who's a superior race the business is structured around the 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 racial lines as we said the other day, the other week you we, you take a white man to the bank you go the black man to the bank and the bank looks at you what the guarantees that you have mm. the white boy he's got his farm his grandfather's farm he's got trucks he's got a, he and most likely won't be knocked by a car mm. the insurance policies are more favorable towards him a black boy you give him 2 million now on his way to alex he mm -hmm. might get robbed mm -hmm. that man has disappeared so you talk about economics you are talking about security mm -hmm. you are talking about st stability and other things and the the economic system that we have been working with on the african continent right it is based on fake money which is photocopied papers right where it's not it's not valid it's worth nothing i mean right. when i came here it was 1 to 6 1 to 7 to the us dollar now is 1 to 17 1 to 18 what difference does it make even oh, after shocking. even with the best policy and the gov best constitution in the world yes you still can't get it right as black people so i stand also and wonder you did not take land you did not you you are you, are, you complied to the best of the requirements of the international community right but why would botswana have a stronger currency than south africa why would the rand be going down even when you have done your best as black people you still can't get this so i almost said the word you still can't get this thing right <laughs> i please help me when did the conversations of kodesa take place when we were still planning transition from the old national party mm. and talking about preparing ourselves for election there was an era where i Just think so. white people were aware that power is slowly moving out of our hands mm. if i'm correct it was slightly around 1990 91 but the, the fake part is that they 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 knew power was changing hands yes but they did not they, their anticipation mm -hmm. was actually an anticlimax hmm. because when what they thought would happen is that at the coming of the black people into power right 
they were going to lose power. Okay. And that was, in all honesty, political power, economic power, and, and in all spheres. So their fear was legitimate because they'd noticed what had happened from Mau Mau sure. to Zimbabwe to Zambia to Mozambique. And except, so, and, so when they heard that South Africa is going to be liberated, yes. one, they thought there was going to be blood on the streets, they are going to lose their banks, they are going to lose their insurance, and voila, on the morning of Hello. the independence, actually one arrogant white person actually was actually heard saying, had we known this is what you wanted all along? We would have let you have it. What the, what the hell we killing would people? Have. Would we have had? You want to share toilets? And we call that democracy? Why can't you build your own, to build your own toilet? Hello? There's much more to independence than just shouting slogans. Do you think it's enough to have a hashtag? What action should black people take to validate mm. that value? When we say black lives matter, they matter because if, if you don't think they do, they will protest, they will march. What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm sorry I might say something that is totally out of character. Yes. But while we're busy writing memos, they are putting their knees, they are killing, they are shooting, and etc. So we, we don't want to end up having a cosmetic form of a high surge of energy right now in the backdrop of the death of Floyd, which is only accompanied by a few memos submitted at the, at the, at the city hall. And you go there and make a speech, yeah, enough is enough, enough yeah. is enough, and we go home. Let's agree on cons on principle. Sure. Racism, separatists, colonialists, Kong clans, whatever you call them. The Kong clan. Kong Kong clan, yes. Yes. These systems are alive and well, and they surely have sponsorships and money to drive such agendas. And there's a conspiracy theory right now happening that there could be a catch around the elections of the president. There could be a catch again on the insurances and claims. And above and above everything else, there could be a catch of tightening up security on the black communities because they're not becoming violent. So this thing is going to ricochet backwards on a boomerang. So this is all to increase security measures to manage black people. That's what it will Because up. what? Blacks are a threat to the world? Or blacks are a threat to the U.S.? We are good for labor. We are good for dances. And picking up our swords and shields to be doing traditional dances. <laughs> when it comes to really issues of impacting the economy, yes, as you'd sir. find that you can have a, a conference in Europe to discuss the problems of Africa and not one African is on the table. Yeah. We are good to be spoken ab Ooh. about, not to be spoken to. Mm. We're going to be taking some calls. 011-883-3343. I'm taking your calls right now. You want to be part of this conversation. Today I felt like we have to include you and make sure that we drive this because everyone that's watching is aware of what's happening in the world. And these are the type of conversations that are going to impact on our policy, on how we craft the next policy, on how we craft our democracy. The world is four months away from the biggest elections that impact on the world economy. Do you think this is Trump's, this is a kick of a dying horse? They can only come to two, two, two things. Either this uh, event on Floyd adds to the fear of the great American people yes. in the hands of a middle person or a far right person who will now come with the anger to have a retaliation on the white community. Mm -hmm. That's one side. Or the black community can come in volumes if the democratic system works to say we have been victimized enough. The question is how does a man who is in power try to balance if he has ambitions of having a second term, right. which I think he has. If he has ambitions of having a second term, right now he's thinking where is his locus of control? Where, where are his votes? Where are his people? And if he can make the regular... And by the way, what Trump says, that's what the white, white community say in their private spaces. And if he can reach them and say, I am your man, I will be able to protect you. I will use the army. I will use security to make sure that you guys are safe. And the black hooligans that are running on the streets will not end up on your veranda. Then surely he can create the, the events of you. this uprising into you. a security feature, which you. will now move over into the votes, voting side. You. But if you. democracy is truthful, and the Italian, and the American, and the African, says we want time for change. Right. We know that on voting, you're only dealing with 20, 30% of people who vote. The other 90 don't even bother and care. Mm -hmm. so, but so if the, whoever the president should be could be actively activating that group of people who are li literally tired, both mm -hmm. of the extreme whites and extreme blacks who just want a country that is normalized, it could actually be a change of horses for, 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 for Donald Trump. And so this is orchestrated? Even if it is not orchestrated, a good politician is proactive in turning things for his advantage. That's the genius of being a leader. So you, how do you convert the problem right now that is on the streets 
into votes in your bag. And if he has a good marketing team, they are busy trying to see how do they package it, how do they fix it, what are their taglines, and what must they tell the voting community that Trump is the right man. It's important that we infuse what's happening on the other side of the Atlantic or the Pacific um, with what we're going through. A struggle of black Americans or African Americans is a struggle of all Africans. In fact, let's agree. Yes. This is a mirror. America is a mirror yes. of the entire African community facing the colonial system, facing the legal system, sure. facing the, the, the oppressors. So what, are, what has happened in South Africa and what has been happening in South Africa and all across Africa mm -hmm. and what is happening in America, for me, this is like a pivotal, it's, we are right there. You told me about a scenario of what's happening uh, with regards to a friend who's stuck in the U.S. is trying to make their way here. Yeah? Having lived for the longest of time in the U.S. and all of a sudden the edge to come back home because now you must explain yourself at every traffic light. You, the apartheid, you ran away from Africa. And you go and catch it far. Oh, mercy. Yes. You, you suffer twice, man. We need to just make this connection, ladies and gentlemen. But for those that are watching, 011-883-3343. Um, join us. Call us live. We'll take your call. And all we need, all we need right now is a united African movement. Not a united African-American movement, not a united South African-African, not a united, a united African movement. Can we commodify our value as, as a united people? Is the black economy possible? The black economy is possible. However, the black economy, as long as it rallies around glorifying the yes. colonial system, yes. it is bound to fail. I want to challenge okay. and send a shockwave yes, around the entire continent and beyond. I belong to more than 15, if not 20, Pan-African uh, platforms on Facebook sure. and WhatsApp and, uh, and, 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 and Internet and etc. I've seen, I've they seen. They are all sloganeering. They think that by sending a few videos of Marcus Gavi and sending a buffalo soldier, <laughs> he wants you to yourself from mental slavery. That becomes a playground. Basically, it's a notice board of pain. It's, it's, it's a cry room. Yes. For, for babies. Yes. But until these Pan-African organizations can begin also just to say, can we unite? Unite on what? On the common goal of liberation of the African people. Liberating them from what? We need to look at the system, as right. we've been saying. Right. Head on. Right. And I think the very first system, I was speaking to one of the representatives of EFF this morning. Yes. They said, what's the name of your party? They said, economic, uh, what? Economic, economic freedom uh, econ fighters. Economic freedom fighters. Yes. And then I asked, what's your first name on your thing? He said, economic. Then I said, right now you call yourself an economic party. Do you even have a stock fair mm. where your members are putting one rand each okay. so that you can say you are impacting the economy? Right. Or rather you're just an economic freedom by, by party title. that and, is and doing more slogans. And what was the answer? I'm no longer in the positions of power. That was the answer that I received. Oh, but, wow. but, but the rebuke was straight because if you are an economic party, yes. then start on the economy. Uh, prayers goes out to everybody, every African out there in Europe, uh, every African in the U.S., um, Russia, where you can no longer preach the gospel, um, everywhere in the world. Uh, our fellow brothers and sisters, you are all uh, children of this continent. That's why your first name is African and surname is American. African-American, African-European, wherever you are. God bless you. Bishop, you said something that African leaders are intoxicated. What's the problem with obsession for champagne? I have a problem with you drinking champagne, uh, yes. uh, uh, Tibas. Let me be honest, on air, and put it on the record. I have a problem with you drinking sh I have a problem with you drinking champagne. Yes. As a political leader, when the people are drinking sewage water. I want to put it in context. I don't want you to take it at a personal level. I, 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 you know why I'm challenging you? Yeah. I think that we need to be factual and make references of incidents. Mm -hmm. Are you referring to when maybe January 8th, there's footage of politicians celebrating the ANC's birthday? Because that's a special occasion. That's the birthday of the ANC. Or, or has, has this occurred in Parliament? Where do you reference your source from? You can consider, for example, take out the white elephants that we run around ourselves as government mm. from the expenses of security around our leaders celebrations of ANC 20, 50, 30, 40 birthdays, whatever. But they should yeah. celebrate. It's, a, it's the largest African honestly, political honestly movement. Honestly speaking, if I could have my hands on the 10 million, 
which you, are, you want to celebrate mm. and take that money directly to a project like Alex. Tell me that that celebration will not be celebrated with the people. So your celebration is not an exclusive club of a few selected members of your party who must put on some bow ties and walk up to a, to a, to a hotel mm -hmm. and then we are celebrating ANC. It has become again the same problem we're talking about of building a pyramid which is only accessible to the few. Mm -hmm. Can the poor people of the community who voted for you also have access cards to those uh, to those celebrations and sip those wines? The big answer is no. But how is not celebrating going to improve leadership or address the issues of service delivery? I'm just, uh, do we blame it on the practice of celebrating or probably do we blame it on um, other factors which could be far surpassing those of being seen in a festive mode. I am pushing for prioritizing of our of our happiness, prioritizing of our celebrations. That those celebrations for me are a spit on the face of the people that you are leading. Mm. That in all honesty, when you hear that there's a budget just for people to go and listen to a speech, and you must fly the whole parliament and everybody else to to Cape Town because this is now our government and you spend millions just to get people here a speech, you know, and you tell me that this makes an impact to the country, print that damn thing and just put on email. People can read for themselves where they are, take the money and place it on critical issues that need to be resolved. Don't you think the South African government has um, done a great job in one, well, I can't say now for level three, but don't you think we've you know, looking at the leadership of Dr. Zulim Kize. Mm. I think at some point, uh, I'll give him 10 out of 10, mm -hmm. just before lockdown, until uh, Minister Enji Mutecha scored an own goal. <laughs> um, we were winning this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But credit, you know, I, I was nervous. I thought we were going to see over 5,000 people mm. dead by this time. And our stats, you know, before level three, uh, kind of... It resembles come, come, yeah. leadership come and with, how we come with contain me, this. Come with me, Tavos. There is one way where you are dealing with the problem as an emergency. Mm -hmm. And you are constantly on an emergency button. And there's another way where you can be proactive and you can have systems in place that are permanent. Okay. And I thought after we get the 500 billion as an injection for corona, we would actually not use it as an emergency fund to do all the extinguishing of managing a crisis yes the question is after the crisis we have a debt to pay have we been able to convert that day debt into a sustainable business agricultural sanitization industrialization reproduction and etc so that you don't always act on an emergency mode mm. for an emergency mode give the men 20 out of 20 for the first time the whole country was in flames and the government managed to to, to harness it all together sure but cannot be telling me that right now Masks that we're selling for five rand are now selling for 60, 70, 80 rand per mask. And you still cannot be able to have some of these factories and industries move on to mainland so that you only don't work with an emergency. And that's my, that's my gripe with African leadership, that we are always on the panic button. Today we saw a big, like, huge support online from celebrities, actors, organizations, uh, Blackout Tuesday. And... Um, I like how we got so organized and we made the hashtag trend. Mm. And the thought hit me. Um, beyond just organizing ourselves on a viral platform. Then what? What next? What next? How are we going to formulate the, 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 the next tangible this solution? Might sound, I might sound like a broken record tell, but yes, please. Let, let me keep on saying it. We need to start putting our money where our mouths are. Okay or else these talk shows and hashtags will not end. I mean, I thought by now two or three African presidents could have actually offered, I want to make, make, make an appeal, another okay. hashtag, that let's get Floyd buried on mainland and make a statement, build a monument around him that this will stop and we're bringing Africans back home. Make a statement. Let's make an offer to put a gra his grave on mainland because the West does not want us. Why must we be forcing each other and having our black people being killed? And Mayweather is paying for the funeral, by the way. I saw, you know, that Floyd Mayweather is paying for the funeral. Right. Heads off, heads so, off, heads so off. So definitely to... we can fly the body across we the country. We can fly the body and plant his body back on the ground. What, as, as a sign of what? What would, make, what would make a better statement to the history and turn the clock of time and begin to show the Americans where home is? But my, my, my issue is this. His incident, the ordeal, is one amongst millions 
that was captured on camera. Mm. How many are what? not captured? No, how many? Let's come, to, let's come here mm. in the continent right now. Central Africa. Central Africa here. Mm. There are kids by the age of 10. Who are digging coal Carrying, mm. carrying R4, mm. AK-47. Mm. Kids who are subjected to such conditions because Dave. of the army. They are slaughtered every day. And we don't see that on video. If it was to be captured on camera, do you think we'll have the same vivaciousness around this mobilization of Black Lives Matter? Ask me why. Why? The same system is looting diamonds, looting this mineral they use for making cell phones. They are benefiting from the war. So you look around how the colonialist has worked. They come around with 100 rand. They give 60 rand to the ruling party. They give 40 rand to the opposition party. When the ruling party misbehaves, then they put an extra 10 rand there. The war in Angola is sponsored by America throughout. We have known that. Congo, China, and America, hands are deep in the cookie jar in terms of pulling out resources from the, including European countries, who have an interest. Remember, countries that manufacture guns and weapons, mm. they make money when there is war. So while we are talking about two, three-year-old, five, ten-year-old ten boys year old kids. carrying guns, yeah. the question is, that who is supplying those guns? Let's talk about South Sudan. If Black Lives Matter, mm. do we even know, to everybody who posted mm. today, Blackout Tuesday, mm. do we even know what happened in South Sudan yesterday? Ask me the question. Ask me another Last question. night, South Sudan, mm. none of us raised a single tweet or question. We didn't even raise the conversation. To another level. Two things can be... Con con so because it's happening in America, it's catching the world. Mm. Attention. Two things can be said. Yes. One, we want to thank... Uh, the universe for having given us an opportunity for media. In that case, then our reporting and our con conversations, I mean, you and me know this conversation will not fly on national broadcast. Mm -hmm. It won't even take off on the editorial table. It won't, <laughs> guys, we, we cannot do this. So m communication has improved. But on the backdrop of those deaths that are happening in Sudan, you want to know which will be the third largest producer of oil in the world? Who? South Sudan. Is that why there's genocide in our backyard and we are not talking about it? I, I, I am against what took place in Minneapolis. I'm against what took place. I'm against, I don't have to qualify mm. my standpoint. Mm. Please, I'm 100% black as it gets. Mm. So I'm not even going to talk about it. Mm. I am just looking at the ignorance of African people. How much is such a billion dollar industry? that while we are crying out loud for what's happening in Minneapolis, mm. tons of gallons of oils are stolen every day in South Sudan. That's resources. Mm. But the lives of people are lost by the second. There's a and picture, there's a picture a I saw it. that made me cry. There's this oil pipe, this big pipe, yes. huge pipe, with a big brand on it, British Petroleum, Yes, going through a village and you look at the dilapidated house and the children that are languishing in Nigeria. Mm. And this pipe carrying petrol. I need lean on this one. Driving, driving through the village. Yes. And that oil is moving into fueling Buckingham Palace and, 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 the, and the British government. And totally ignoring the people that are on the side. Now you hear that the, the Nigerians are burning those fee oil fields and etc. But I think even, even as much as you tell us about the G GDP of the country, but this thing is not benefiting the local people. Again, I would punch the educated African who has not converted his education into industries to support and help his own village and people down back home. Imagine if we can empty cent on black people, educated people, back to their rural communities. How many, how many professionals will be there? And will they not bring the intelligence, the knowledge they are we, have? To... Are, we, are we prepared to go, to go back and see value I'm from Sharpville. How do I even leave the comfort of a Gulf estate to go back to Sharpville? Don't you think that's the mental disposition? We've been used, we've gotten used to fit in. Let me salute, uh, let me salute uh, Maponya. Let me salute him. Yes. In his eye. I managed to say a speech on his, on his, on his memorial service. Fantastic. He became a billionaire, not from, uh, from Paris. <laughs> he became a billionaire, not from Senten. Mm. But when you understand the anatomy of your community, may his soul rest in peace. 
can, can, I can't say further than that. Mm. So in as much as you look at Sharpeville and say, what am I doing in Sharpeville? You know, I'm now living in Santon. Yes. But if you go back to, to, to Sharpeville and you take off, you, you, walk, you get out of your car, Tibos, and you walk the streets of Sharpeville and look at the people in the eye and identify what they need and take your resources and go and give a solution out there. There's no reason you're going to be the second Maponya in Sharpeville. I did mention earlier on um, that he'll be joining us on the line. Um, you know, when you talk about the um, emancipation, or when you talk about the evolution of black excellence and black leadership, I've had the pleasure to observe this man very close in how he conducts himself, the lesson, just being in his company, just listening to the stories of Robben Island and how psychologically they had to prepare themselves post Robben Island to be one, normal, and live in a system where they now occupy and take on the leadership, not only uh, of South Africa, but the richer square mile. And by far, as the premier of Gauteng, um, projects after projects were launched. And um, I wonder when you've worked so hard and you spend time behind bars and you realize that what you fought for decades ago is still eminent in society today. I'm joined by um, uh, a former colleague and friend of President Donald Trump. You, you, My first, word. First Does he want to be remembered as a former <laughs> friend of Donald Trump? <laughs> uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Tokyo Sohuale is joining me on the new normal. Good evening to you, sir, and thank you for your time. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. Welcome to the new normal. How are you doing, sir? People touch. I'm fine, and how are you? I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can just talk about a few things, um, but you are watching what's happening um, over in the U.S., and I'm sure you're sitting back asking, saying, man, these are the days, this reminds me of what we went through in South Africa during the 1976 and, you know, fighting apartheid. Do you think there's a blueprint to help our fellow Africans across the Pacific on how to deal with these matters. Are they handling it right? I don't think the problem should be laid at the doorstep of the African-American people. It's an American issue. America, Tibo Touch, is fragmenting and breaking down from inside. The country with all these weapons, with all this power, but we are watching live a people breaking down and falling apart. Let's talk about racism. We have the right here in South Africa, definitely in the whole continent, to address ourselves to this question that is happening in America. Racism in South Africa in particular, as everybody knows, was the most internationalized negative policy worldwide. The whole world joined us in fighting against this thing. Um, the highest point of this fight internationally was when the United Nations Organization passed two resolutions at the instigation of Oliver Tambo, leader of the ALT in exile at the time. Two resolutions by the United Nations. The resolution number one was to describe racism okay. and apartheid as a crime against humanity. Americans must take note of that. And that resolution was passed in New York. Right. Washington. Right. Secondly, the United Nations said racism is a threat or a party to world peace. Okay? Now, right. that's, that, that is the starting point. If this is a crime against humanity, it is a threat to world peace. And this was proclaimed in New York by the world. Um, then we've got to say to the Americans, why are you not taking into cognizance the fact that this is a crime? Tied a man down into a cab, I mean a, a pavement. Four thousand guys pinning a man down there. And it's not for the first time. Black men in particular have been dying all the time in the United States. It's just that this time they're dying live on full television. So 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 it's an American problem. And, and it's not it's not just a problem of black Americans. But however, there's the, the a duty that we all owe to the African Americans because they are children from this continent. They've been quiet for so long. The AU itself has got to issue a statement, not just a statement, but 
there's got to be a way of saying to white supremacists in America, whether they may be out there as governors or in the White House, right. this has got to stop. Because each time you are lynching a black man, you're lynching us here, you're hurting us. This is a brother or a sister. You are hurting Africa. And it's high time that Africa, from where these black Americans come from, needs to take a stand. Remember, in America, they are a minority. With the majority here on this continent. True. It's time that we now have got to express ourselves and not be these people to their own devices. Let's, you're talking about America, and this is the perception, and this is what you experienced. You yourself, you were detained at uh, JFK. As, um, as, um, I, know, I know this person. You are right. I've seen this before. And, and here's how this thing started. The ANC was declared by the government a supremacist white government of the United States under Kennedy at the time. No matter how we look at it, it was declared as a terrorist organization. Why? Because on December 16, 1961, when we were left with no other options, Nelson Mandela led the struggle in the area of armed struggle. We decided that it is time now to fight because we are left with only two choices, stand up and fight or leave forever off on your knees. This is what the ANC was banned here. Where did we go to for the first time when the ANC was banned? We went to the consulate of the United States and were rejected. What they did was to support the white supremacy government which had established the Republic in 1961 against the will of the majority here in America. And they declared that for the ANC and other organizations which were fighting for change and democracy, they declared them a terrorist organization. Fast forward 30 years later, it is 1990. The ANC is unbent. The American government didn't recognize that. They didn't change the law which had proclaimed us or prescribed us or proscribed us as a terrorist organization. Fast forward, I became the premier and I, was, I went into business. Visited America, stopped right there in New York. They checked my passport, they called me aside. I said, what's going on here? They don't tell me the truth. I later find out that it's because they wanted to send me back. And I'm still classified, even until today, That's in right. America, as a black freedom fighter, classified as a terrorist. I took up this case, went with Nelson Mandela to the White House eventually, two years later, to place this matter on record in front of George Bush, Condoleezza Rice, Chendai Fraser, and other people there in the White House who got photographs and video where we went with Madiba. They said they would change this law because Nelson Mandela himself is included in the same law as a terrorist. Now, that's what happened in America. So this racism continued long after we came out of the chain. But there's not much they can do to us here on the continent. They've got to play some kind of a role and pretend we could be good friends. The idea is that they are continuing with the persecution of black people in their own country. And this must not only just stop by itself. We in Africa who carry the majority, the people whose, 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 whose blood is flowing in the, in the veins of African Americans out there, we have got to make sure that this thing comes to an end. Okay, but Africa now... Africa must stand up for these Africans out there. Go ahead. But now my question is simple. If we are saying it must come to an end and there's an offer on the table as Africans who are in Africa, uh, to say, guys, you are a minority in the U.S., come back to Africa. Where no, 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 should no, they she, go? No, no, that's not how it's played. Then everybody must go back to where they come from. The world is what it is today. Let's accept it. People have moved, and people are moving on. You, Tibo Tati, have lived in America from time to time. Yes. You know, we have lived in the Soviet Union, many parts of the world. That's not how it should be. That you know, let's go back. That we are breaking the spirit of unity and humanity. Remember, out there in the streets of Los Angeles, in the streets of Washington, of of of, of New York, it's black and white now standing up. I'm very happy to see white American compatriots together with their blacks taking a stand. It's not just a black march like it used to be in the 60s. Now the white people are seen in greater numbers. I don't say they were not there in the 60s. They were when they were marching with Martin Luther King and others. But all I'm saying is that they can't come back home. We've got to fight that struggle and win and change that continent because it's not our job 
to lead America to white races. It was not our job to lead Hitler and his races do whatever they were doing in Germany and in those parts of Europe where, 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 where they were the causing mayhem. Our fathers went out there and confronted Hitler in North Africa, helping the whole allied world to defeat him. So we're not giving up, we're not giving up America to white race. I like it. I like we're, that. Yeah, we're, I like we're gonna, that. We, we, we've got to stand with those people. That's you, the point. You, went, you went the right direction. You mentioned something about North Africa. How do we make the same amount of noise with what's happening, the genocide in South Sudan, the tanks of oils that are being taken and the children who are subjected to child slavery and, and, and being, uh, what, what do you call it in the army, uh, when you, you got kids at the age yeah, of 12 in yeah, South Sudan yeah. carrying rifles. Why are we making so much noise when it's hitting the U.S. and ignoring the very same geno a worst far, far, by far worse genocide right here on the continent? Are we ever going to talk about what's happening in South Sudan? Chibo Touch, man, you are touching a hot live wire then. <laughs> You're telling the truth the way it should be told. You know they say evil prevails when good people like you and I keep quiet. And we understand that because it's Floyd today out there or it's so and so. We've got to confront this thing head on everywhere. These things like you're saying in Sudan. They continue because, you know, we say, okay, we walk away. We say, okay, it happened here. Yeah, demonstrations are finished in America. There have been demonstrations all the time. People doing all sorts of things. But then we can't walk away. We must stay in the cause. Mm. Don't just let this thing happen and then we walk away. What you are seeing in Sudan, what you are seeing in Syria, what our voices must be raised. And let me tell you, people in the world stood up, almost in all the countries, stood up for us here. Not only should we... Um, not learn from that example, but we should make sure that our country occupies the first place when it comes to fighting these things outside there. Because we, we can say, okay, it's happening in another country. Other people didn't say that during the uh, exploitation here. So that you are dead right, man. We want to stand up and, and, and raise our voice, our voices and not be all the time inward, inward, inward looking. Of course, we have problems here. We have many Indeed. problems with the Indeed. But we've got to keep a percentage of our time must be dedicated to this thing. And I'll call upon young girls and young guys. Yes, sir. Youth. Yes, young sir. Young girls and young guys. The way we were, you know, raise your voices. Indeed. Raise your voices, not just here. Um, I'll take some time to speak for other people in other parts of the world. One more question. Uh, Maponga, you've got a question for Honorable Sahwane. You have my most honorable respect, uh, Elder. Just one question for you, my lord. Okay. When you when you were running and sitting in governments and in parliaments, did it ever occur to you that the constitution and the nuances of management of black poverty were entrenched in the constitution? And did it ever occur to our heroes who come who came from the struggle to 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 read through and find out that the system that they were going to implement was going to further perpetuate? the misery and trouble for the black people. And and in, in, in your sitting in governments, when you are now fully aware, and I'm glad you, what you are saying is more honest because you're now from the outside. When you look at the issues of Sudan and Angola and Congo right here, when and, and parliamentarians and presidents are sitting in isolation discussing these things, what goes through your minds in these places of power where you must actually be putting systems and structures in place and voices and military and etc. I'm, I'm, I'm groppling to understand the honesty of an African leader when it comes to dealing with the African issues. Well, a very important point, but let me correct you first, sir. I'm not that type of person that speaks to you today because I'm out here. I've spoken out against a party. I've spoken out right inside the government of the ANC all the time. I've, I've been in trouble because you speak out inside. So I don't, I'm not like those people who speak because you know, it's easier today. My voice is known. I well, always speak out. But I like, I like your question. Mm. Um, is it okay to ask that certain things will be perpetuated? Look, we've got a great constitution here. A beautiful constitution. And this constitution, more than the Bill of Rights inside this constitution, has got aspects like freedom of, of people to get housing, freedom of food, freedom, all types of freedoms which you normally don't find in constitutions. Usually the world constitution I'm very, very small. The American Constitution is the shortest. A few pages. That was the Yeah. But, but, but we loaded. We loaded. The U.S. Constitution is amended from time to time to include things. 
But ours, we know that the right of this, the right of housing, the right of education, the right of all sorts of things, things that you normally shouldn't be finding in the constitution. But we are so, so excited with making sure that our people never see again the rights of a party that we loaded all these things as constitution. But let me tell you, constitutions cannot speak for themselves. So I come to your point. We've got to stand up and fight for that constitution and make sure those things are not just words, words, words. We must feel change. And, 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 and they won't feel change if we're in government and then we turn against that constitution by doing things that will undermine it, by stealing money, by capturing, by doing all sorts of things. Therefore, we've got the responsibility to make sure that a constitution is a living document, not just a pile of words. You need something to do as a piece of paper, it can hang up in the toilet. You can try to do As a piece of paper, it's got no voice. The voice of the constitution is real high. So we should not sit back and think that these things will happen by themselves. I agree with you. When you see things happen in Sudan, you know, and we, we are we quiet, then it means you're silent about certain parts of laws of the world here in Africa and the United Nations. That's true. Where people are saying, yeah. yeah, where people are saying, let's fight for these things. So you are right. I said with you, the voices of our people must be raised so that we don't do them because Floyd is dead in America, but because Floyd should not have died in the first place. Thank you. That is so true. Lastly, we are approaching June 16 under lockdown. How would you? like to see the youth of 2020 commemorating June 16 under lockdown dealing with this pandemic and how has it been for you? I mean it's the first time uh, for the entire world where the economy shut down and here we are the Christians had to celebrate Easter under lockdown our Islam Muslim Muslim brothers Ramadan and now we are heading to June 16 a revolutionary month in South Africa. How should we celebrate this or commemorate this day under lockdown? What would you be doing, uh, uh, Honorable Sekhwali? I admire the class of 1976. I admire them right now. I wasn't in South Africa when this thing happened. I was training as a soldier in the military and in politics in the Soviet Union. We saw it on television. And we are astounded to see the courage and bravery of people like us, uh, uh, Hector Peterson, at the age of 13, many the barricades and dying for his country out there. So what's the message today? How should we celebrate this day? Oh, 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 the youth, the young people of the country remain engaged. You know, you can go to discourse, of course, act young. You can go and do all kinds of things, you know, have fun, whatever. Act young, enjoy that life. But hey, 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 give a time also to remain engaged about national issues. Yes, sir. Because the nation, you, mm. are, you are taking over. You are mm. taking over. Mm. You're not just saying, oh, there's Mandela, uh, the Turkish Sukhani. I'm, I'm going past my, my years right now. They must remain engaged because the future is yours. Mm. You can't dance the whole night on, 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 on the dance floor and in discourse and think that somebody's going to take care of your things. Do that. There's a time for dancing. And when you do that, do it big time. But also, <laughs> find time. We used to do this, find time to remain engaged. What are the issues? Poverty. Kids must fall. Those type of but just end up in South Africa. Look at the neighboring countries. Because the world is, we are not an island. Mm. The world is much bigger than where you are. Let them remain engaged, learn about other countries, study different yeah, philosophies yeah, and so on. Yeah, and, and have a clear understanding of where mankind is, is going and what role you are playing in that direction which mankind is going. So that you don't just stand up when you are told, if Floyd is dead in America, okay, okay, let's say something. A t shirt, let me, no, no. You should understand that you may engage engaged by having a clear understanding. From time to time, go down, sit down, guys. Put your drinks outside before you take well, those well drinks. Said. And, and have a proper understanding of where you are so that you are activists. Well then you said. dance, you are activists. You child, you are activists. You do your thing, but you are activists. It's your world after all. Such so a is not there to fight for you. But Nelson Mandela is not. Tabo Beggy will not be there all the time. It's your world. You are the Tabo Beggy. Of the future. Well said. Maponga, you got last question. The last one, the beautiful one. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm glad I'm talking to a senior businessman in the house. We just want leadership in terms of creating a viable right. black economy. A viable black economy, which would be parallel to the colonial system that we are all trying hard to go around and it will take us years to gather the experience that you have and gather the First knowledge. Of all, that is you a black have. economy possible? 
um, but we have group leaders. And I think if, the, if, if your generation goes away without putting the bricks on the ground, I mean, I'm looking at a few billionaires and millionaires who are in the country that for once, can you just maybe before you guys ch check out of this world, can you organize for us just maybe one nice black bank? Just, is that too much to ask? Just one. Is it possible? Just one bank. You know, uh, the, 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 we are all guilty. So am I. We're guilty, you know, we, we wanted to find this thing that young people are calling white monopoly capital. That's how the ANC calls it. It's not just a Julius Malema thing. You know, after all, he's, uh, he's not fallen very far away from the tree. The fight against monopoly capital, and monopoly capital is white, that's it, the ANC language. Now, now, we've got now to crack this thing by making sure that we put our capital together. Yes. This thing of doing it alone, I'm going to get rich by now. Hello. Put our capital together. Hello. Let's map our capital together. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then you can create your own banks. You can create also. Because the buying power of this country is ours. Yes, sir. It's just that people, you know, are jumping about and wanting to succeed by themselves. Mm -hmm. Time is right for us to sit down, but it's very, very difficult. Because there's a lot of greed, a lot of uh, myopic approaches, a tunnel approach. Instead of us sitting down, and we have proposed these things privately to people. Let's put our capital together. No, here yeah, we seem to be wanting to succeed alone. Therefore, um, th there is a need, of course, but we can't just black it all the time. Because we are one country, it's our country. We're not leaving any space for anybody. But when we're working as black and white, that's what the Constitution says. That's what the Freedom Charter says. Black and white in South Africa. So those blacks who have to work with us, let's work together and put the capital together. Those whites who are prepared to build a new South Africa, the economy says, not just football and, you know, policy, we clap hands together, but when it comes to poverty, we're left on our own. So capital must be brought together, mm. and we must do that as South Africans, because let me tell you at the end of the day, the Japanese are fighting for themselves. Mm. Well at said. the end of the day, the Americans are fighting for themselves. Yes, sir. At the end of the day, the Germans are not fighting for us, the British are. So we will only succeed when black and white here in South Africa recognize us that we've got to be the same part together, particularly when those who have had the commanding heights of the economy of this country, the black white white business person, recognizes that you can't just do it with this keep keeps small little camps, which are called black Korean empowerment. Let's do this thing right. Because if we don't do it right, we're maybe postponing yes, an explosion. Woo! Wow. Check mate. We are headed for a big explosion. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've just assigned him the role of the president of the Future Bank. Uh, Honorable <laughs> Tokyo Sehwale. Thank you. Thank you for Give us the account. You, you, you give, take the bank, Chief. You take give, the bank. Give us the account <laughs> details. We start depositing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for laying the thank seed. We look much. forward to a studio sit down with you. But once again, thank you for giving us your time. Uh, Honorable Dr. Tokyo Sehwale joining thank us. Thank on the new normal. God bless. Okay. Yes. And it's really uh, in our hands. It's in our hands. We are the one with the consumption power. If you look at how many people pack malls, how many people pack retail stores, we are the economy. Mm. In, a, in a sense, when we talk about black economy, the actual economy that white people exist in is in a black economy. Yes, sir. Because if each and every single black person tomorrow woke up and said we are not spending a cent, I can tell you right now. If we, this, if, we, if we should do a revolution. Just one day. A revolution. Yeah. Let's say on Friday. Yeah. F on behalf of Floyd. You know that black... Let every black person... Yeah. Walk up to the bank and withdraw their money. Yo. Stop it right there. That's the end of the show. And let's put it Yo. in one account. Woo! That's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> the economy will close down by Wednesday next Flat week. Flat on its Flat knees. Flat on its They'll be begging. So let's stop the conversation of a black economy as possible. The world that we live in today yes. exists because of the black economy. Dunk, dunk. So the truth is, the landlords must change. So correct. End of discussion. Correct. You can't be a tenant mm. under your own roof. No. You can't be. The power is with us. The and, power is with until, us. Until we say, we are the people. Yes. We are the people. Hello? Yes. Lord. It's been real. My name is Tibo Touch. I want to thank Bakang. I want to thank Musaku Zwayo. I want to thank Freedom uh, F F Freedom Pages. I want to thank uh, uh, Madosini, uh, Katrina Kane, 
God bless you, everybody, for being part of this. But most significantly, I want to thank this amazing crew. I think you should shoot this. These people are off to Soweto, back home. Umkiz, Eloya, that's Tibos on the left right there. I want to thank Bernard on camera. I want to thank Bali swagging with her pink mask. I want to thank Kitumeti, who's make sure that everybody eats before the show so that nobody's grumpy. Big shout out to Nico, who puts the script together. Shout out to Tapelo. I want to give a big thank you to Zinte, who's been here since 9 a.m. Lord, am I missing out on anybody? Kutwana holding on camera. Ooh, oh, wow, wow. But most significantly, I want to thank you, my leader. I want to thank you. You don't know thank, what thank you. these dialogues, what this has done to me. I'm a better African today. I'm a better African today. I have better conversations with my friends today. Mm. Uh, I don't care what is in their car collection or their next car. Uh, you know, fashion show. So, uh, no, 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 no. You have, uh, have, 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 have transit. No black child coming after me must experience being subjected to the banking laws systems that I had to deal with, be subjected to the marginalization in boardrooms because you stand out, therefore you're a threat and we're not gonna mm -hmm. give him the deal because he poses a threat. Not because the idea is bad, mm -hmm. but if we, feel, if we empower him, he'll give us trouble. He'll give us trouble. Mm -hmm. And I wanna thank God that the reason why I can do this show, <laughs> man, financial independence is powerful mm -hmm. and it's possible. Money gives you freedom. We should never yourself. hold back expressing or sparking the thought Nobody here is anti-white, mm. but for a break, can we just get, can we That's just, can we just be, can we put all the cards on the table and play fair? Mm. With that said, come in live, oh, shout out to my man, Aubrey, how can I forget our director of the show, shout out to Aubrey as well, shout out to everybody, thank you for watching, thank you for being part of this, God bless you, when you are out there, be safe, keep yourself masked up like I'm about to right now. And um, whoever you pray to, may God bless you too.